Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to complete the star chart as fast as possible so you're able to unlock arbitrations and the steel path. I have a few builds with Nova here that will help you get through every mission as swift as possible so you can grind out the star chart as quickly as you possibly could. But first, if you don't already know this, to unlock arbitrations in the steel path, you'll have to complete every node on every planet here. A node is these like little dots that you play the missions on. And if you haven't beat a node yet, it will blink like this. So you'll know you'll have to go beat it. There are a few locations that you unlock through the quests and the main quest progression, like Lua, the Kuva Fortress. And then there's another one here called the Zaraman. It's, uh, that's the last one you unlock. It's like the, you'll have to beat the new war and then you can do the Angels of Zaraman quest. So you can unlock this area, but you'll have to complete every single node on all these planets here. Except on Eris, this Jordas Golem Assassinate and the Mutalist Allied V Assassinate. They are excluded from this. Also, if you're really close to beating all the nodes and you're not sure which ones you have to do still and you can't like find it, you can go to Pluto or you can go to any relay. Actually, you don't have to just go to Pluto. And once you get here, you're gonna wanna go to the Arbiters of Hexus Syndicate room. They're over here, usually on the right. I think it's the same in every relay. And this first guy on the left here, he actually is who you talk to once you unlock arbitrations and he'll give you the uh, rewards and stuff. But he tells you, yeah, he's going to tell me I'm not ready for arbitrations. And then he'll tell me some of the mission nodes that I haven't done. So I have a lot to do still. So since he's just telling me the node names, it's not really telling me like what planet or what I have to do. But you can go to Google and like, what's this, Apollodorus or something. So if I go to Google and type in Apollo Doris Warframe, I've already done this, then it'll come up and there'll be a lot of search results. It won't always tell you exactly where it is. This Warframe Drops website will tell you where things are at uh, most of the time. If you just type in Apollo on here, uh, then all the blue results will be places, but not every single location has a drop table, so it's not always on this website. But if you just type in the mission name and Warframe, then some result will give you a hint onto what planet it is. So my first general tip for you for grinding out the star chart is to play solo or with a friend that's teaching you the game or is learning the game with you. If you play in public lobbies, the experience you have is going to be really inconsistent. It could be a lot of fun, or you could get carried and not learn anything, or your team's going to hold you back and make missions last longer. They could do this by using frames and defense missions like Wisp, Limbo, or Nova who can slow enemies down so it takes longer to kill them. They could take a long time to get to doors where you need two people to open them, or it could take them like the entire minute to get to the evac at the end of the mission. All of these things are kind of small gripes, but with over 100 missions, maybe like 200 missions, I'm not even sure how many missions are in the game, but this is going to add up and ruin, and it's going to damper your experience. It's going to it's just not going to make it as fun, honestly. I think so playing solo or with a friend is much more fun than a public lobby, but that's just my opinion. So my second tip is to use specialized frames so you can complete each mission quickly. And what you can do is make builds and put them on your loadouts so you can quickly swap between them while you're in your navigation screen. So you're like, I have a survival mission. This is the build I want to use. And then you go into your survival mission. But you need different frames for each mission to make them go quicker. I'm trying to make you avoid that by having you play Nova, which I will talk about still. But I want to explain to you, if you're doing like a rescue mission or a capture mission or something else that can go fast, like a sabotage, these are missions where you don't have to interact with the enemy. You can just sprint through and complete the objective. So you want to use a frame that can run through the mission fast because it's going to get the mission to end much quicker. And there's tons of these missions. So investing in a frame like Volt or Nova here is going to make these just go much quicker and much more painlessly. And also, Nova is one of the best for defense missions, because she can speed up enemies, which I'll start talking about her now. You can get her from, where is it, Nama Europa, from beating this boss. You get her components here. It's like, I don't know, 33% chance for each component. Maybe one of them is a little bit harder to get. And then you come over here and get her blueprint from the market. Buy that blueprint. So Nova here is truly a jack-of-all-trades but she is actually a master of one, and that's defense missions, like I said. And that's because of her ultimate, Molecular Prime. It sends out the slow-moving wave, and when enemies are within the radius, their movement speed, their shooting speed, everything is affected by her modded ability strength. If her ability strength is over 70%, enemies will be slowed down, 
and if her ability strength is under 70%, enemies will speed up, actually. Uh, slowing enemies, you're called a Slova. Speeding up enemies, you're called a Speedva. So enemies that are affected by her ultimate are considered primed. On top of speeding them up or slowing them down, you also will do 100% more damage to their health. Not shields or Eximus Overguard, only the health. So as you can see here, doing like 11 damage and 16 crit. And now I do 22 damage and crit. And 32 crit. <laughs> On top of the increased damage, when enemies are killed, they'll explode and do a small amount of blast damage to the enemies around them. So you can see why her ultimate's so good for defense missions. She'll be able to get the enemies out of their spawn quicker by speeding them up, and then the damage vulnerability and the blast damage that she does with it will make it so we can kill the enemies faster. So this will end the rounds quicker, and we can get out of these missions quicker. So for the Nova build, we're going to have to put on one Forma in the dash polarity called Naramon, and then we'll also have to put on a Orican Catalyst. So to quickly explain the builds, the on the speed of a build for defense missions, you'll put on overextended for negative ability strength, which will speed up enemies by 30%. Then we'll have to mod for duration because this actually increases the radius of the ultimate, not range, because the ultimate goes out for a certain amount of time. So the amount of time dictates how far out it goes. Then also on her one, it dictates how many particles she gets. So when you cast her one, these particles here, they will give us 5% damage resistance. And also what they do is when you're in range of an enemy, they will fly away from Nova once per second and attack an enemy and do a small amount of damage. We don't really want this to happen, so we use a ability augment mod. I'll show it here to you. Called the Molecular Fission. And this makes it so when you kill an enemy that's primed by her ultimate, it will give you two back. So you can see here, I cast this. A couple will fly out of here. I'll cast my ultimate. And right now I have 8, and I kill the enemy, and I have 10. So this will keep our damage resistance up. This is like our only form of tankiness on this build, along with Vitality. If you wanted to put on Steel Fiber, you would have to put on another Forma for Vitality, and then you'd be able to fit this on here. So these are the two duration mods, I don't know if I said that. Enemy Radar, because knowing where enemies are makes it so you can kill them quicker. So these last two mods, Streamline and Equilibrium. Streamline will make it so our abilities cost less. And then Equilibrium will make it so when we pick up health orbs, we'll also get energy for them. So this will help us keep up our energy. You'll have to use this in combination of these two mods. Synth Deconstruct makes it so when a companion damages an enemy, it has a 25% chance to drop a health orb. And then Synth Fiber makes it so you can pick up health orbs no matter what your health is at. So basically, your companion damages an enemy, you can pick up the health orb, and then Equilibrium gives you energy. The weapon, so this is the build that I suggest putting on Helios. And I suggest Helios because you can use the Deconstructor Sentinel weapon. So with the Deconstructor Sentinel weapon with gas on it, it will shoot the enemies and create the gas clouds, which will damage enemies within the vicinity. So they all take damage and will all have the chance to drop health orbs. So I got a lot of health right there from that. If you do not totally understand this, I do have another video on it that you can check out. I'll leave it in the description. Also, you can put this Synth Deconstruct and Synth Fiber on any companion. I just highly recommend the Helios with the Gas Deconstructor. There are some better weapons, but this is definitely the best for early game and the easiest to obtain. So using this build is very simple. As soon as you start the match, you just want to use your ultimate to get enemies to go quicker to you. And then also use your one for some damage resistance that you'll keep built up pretty much the whole match. You, pretty, you probably shouldn't have to recast it unless a Nullifier strips it off you. And then once your first ultimate ends, you will use it again. If you use it early, it will get rid of your first ultimate. And you don't want to do that because less enemies will get within the range of it. So after casting your ultimate a bunch and killing all the enemies, you should have a pretty quick defense mission done. That one took me four minutes on the dot. So one way you can augment this build to make it work really well on interception, mobile defense, excavation, and hijack missions you can get rid of overextended to make it so we're not slowing down enemies anymore. Put on intensify and then put on steel fiber. This will make it so we're a little bit more tanky and we will actually be slowing down enemies. So this makes it so on any mission we don't have to kill enemies fast and you just have to complete an objective and it has nothing to do with killing enemies. Then this will just slow all the enemies down and make it pretty easy for you to complete the objective as fast as possible. Especially on interception missions where you just can slow all the enemies down 
and they won't be taking points like crazy while you're trying to capture other ones. Sadly, one of the annoying things with this game is that if you aren't MR10, you cannot create another configuration slot yet. You can't buy one. So you can't separate your Speedva and Slova build. You'll just have to come here and swap it out every single time and then change it back when you go back to Speedva. So her next build is pretty simple. It's a warp build, so you can quickly complete capture missions, sabotage missions, and rescue missions as fast as possible. Again, any mission that you want to run through that you would essentially do with Volt, she can do this pretty well too. And I'll explain the and I'll explain the build in tandem with some gameplay so you can see it work. This build will be completely focused around her third ability called Wormhole. And what it does, as you can see on screen, is that it creates a portal and the endpoint to where the portal takes you is based on the modded range you have and then also the exactly where you're aiming when you cast the ability. So on the build we put on overextended for some range on the portal, fleeting expertise and streamline make it so the ability costs less, rush and sprint boost so we're running faster, and then vitality and equilibrium we talked about before, and escape velocity is another augment mod that makes it so when you travel through a wormhole you will be speed boosted for a short amount of time. Not only is this the build that I use on missions that I just sprint through, but I also use this on spy missions because you can teleport through the lasers and then also get between vaults quicker because it's still a running build. So if you're using this for spy missions, you'll want to conserve your energy, have some energy pads, or kill some enemies in between vaults because you'll have to use so many portals in the vaults and then also to get between them that you'll definitely run out of, run out of energy at some point. But that's just the drawback of the build. If you have a speed frame, just use that instead or another stealth frame. Feel free on any of these builds to just replace it with another frame you have. This was just a recommendation so you don't have to farm a bunch of frames to complete the star chart. I think this is just the quickest way like to use this jack of all trades warframe that Nova is. I also use this on the defection missions. This is the one where you have to escort the survivors between uh, life support systems and then get them to their ship. You can actually put the portal in their walking path and then teleport them where you want in the level. Okay, so I don't have a build for Nova's second ability because it's not the greatest thing in the world. I did want to mention it though, since this video is basically a Nova guide. So when you cast it, a small orb will come out and follow your aim around. Any damage that is done to it before it touches a solid object will then be amplified and hurt enemies very badly when it explodes. The last build is actually just a nuke build for extermination missions. It is using the augment mod called Neutron Star. This augment mod makes it so when you recast Nova's first ability with all the particles, the particles will all disperse off of her and attack enemies, and they'll chain between enemies and everything. It's pretty crazy. They'll do heat damage, and they'll also do a heat status effect, so it'll continue to damage the enemies for a while after they're hit. All the mods on this build are just to make it so this ability kills enemies better, and it just does that by increasing the amount of particles that are there, the damage they do, and then also the range that they fly out at. You'll have to take a weapon with you that can kill Eximus and tanky enemies, like a shotgun or something, or a melee weapon, because this does not do very good at killing them, but it does very well against all the fodder enemies that surround them. So one more thing, some of these builds are a little squishy, but it's not a big deal, because even if you go down on a mission, you still have four revives, and then also when you revive, you get a bunch of energy back, so it's actually kind of a good thing. So that's all the builds I have for Nova. And then also don't forget to equip each build to a loadout so you can just quickly swap between them in the navigation screen. So the last thing you'll need is a weapon that you can invest some time leveling up and making a build for it so you're able to dispose of the regular star chart enemies. Since people progress in different ways in this game, I can't really give you a f like really strict recommendation for yourself. When I first started this game, I used the Hex Shotgun. I don't have a good build for it right now, so I'm not going to show it. But on this playthrough of the game, this is my alt account. I created a Zaw with the Exodia Contagion Arcane, and this is hard carrying me through the game. But I will put a couple videos down in the description of a YouTuber named Zekto, I think is how you say it. He did a ton of research on melee weapons and primary weapons to see what's the best for each mastery rank. So go check those out if you don't have a good weapon. You don't need to pick the best one or the craziest one or anything or like really grind out for something that's like hard to get. You just need a decent weapon that you think you'll have fun with. But before you leave my video, my name's Doth and I hope this was a lot of help to you. If it was, drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. See ya.